2 Kings, if you will, today. I feel this, this, this message is what God would have us to speak to you about this morning. And I feel like there are some folk in this church that need this message, some maybe not so much. But I feel like God is speaking to some people. God is speaking to some people at harvest time. Harvest time is about to become what we have all desired it to be in the past and what we're all looking for God to make out of it. I believe that this church and its people, I told you last Sunday night, we're beginning to gel. Amen. I believe God's people are starting to get their heart right. They're starting to get the right <laughs> desires, the right emotions, the right purpose for being here. And when that happens, revival is going to break out. Amen. Amen. People are going to get born into the family of God. People are going to get touched. People are going to get healed. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just one announcement. This morning after the service... There will be a meal in the fellowship hall. Somebody said it was Pastor Appreciation Month. I think this was kind of a spur of the moment thing that started on Tuesday night. So if you're here and you didn't bring something neat, that's okay. Come and join us anyway. Amen. 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 Let's share together. And enjoy the blessings of God together. 2 Kings chapter 6. Begin reading at verse 13. And he said, Go. I'll tell you what, let's back up and start at about verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall, we, shall be my count. And the man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him off, warned him off, and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Now do you understand what was going on here? There was a spy in the camp. The king of Assyria would make a plan, and he would make this plan in secret and only tell it to his very trusted cohort. But Israel would know about it. So Syria, the king of Syria, operating on his natural ability, said, Aha, somebody in my camp is a traitor. Somebody in my camp is a spy. Verse 12 said, And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words thou speakest in thy bedchamber. How many of you know, although you can't get into what the devil's doing, God knows, and he can share it with you if you will listen to him. And Elisha was listening to the Holy Ghost of God and the Spirit of God. And I want to tell you this morning, folks, that that's not always something that appears the right thing to do in the natural. But it's the right thing to do in the eyes of God. Amen? Amen. And so verse 13 said, and he said, the king of Syria said, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore the king of Syria sent hither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city of Al. How many of you know the devil works more at night because he loves darkness? Yes. How many of you know men love darkness because their deeds are evil? Yes. Amen. The devil works at night. That's what the Bible said here. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host of compassed the city both with horses and chariots 
And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Now you got to get this picture. Here is Elisha, the man of God, standing for God. He knows what Syria is doing. He knows what the king of Syria is doing because he's moving in the power of the Holy Ghost of God. So the king of Syria says, all right, you find out where he's at and we're going to go take care of this. So at night he compasses Elisha's entire camp with soldiers. There they are in all the hills, chariots, soldiers, warriors. The next morning... Elisha's servant goes out of the tent and he looks up and like most of us, he had a reaction. Whoa. He sees all of this. And he looks around. So he, right back in the tent. Amen. And he says to Elisha, they've got us compassed out there. What are we going to do? Verse 16 Talking about Elisha said, and he answered, Fear not. This is good news, folks. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Mm -hmm. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. Listen to what he saw. Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire, round about Elisha. If I were to have a thought for this message this morning, it would be this. God works the night shift. Amen. Our Father, as we come to you now, I thank you for everyone that's under the sound of our voice today. I pray, oh God, as we look into your word, that you would have your way in every heart and in every life. Stir this people, Lord. Encourage us in this day in which we live. Help us to realize that although it looks bad, you're in control. Everything's under control. And you have our backside. I pray, oh God, that you would have your way in the hearts of this people. Lord, touch us all together and we'll praise you and glorify you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Elisha prayed, the Bible said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. That's my prayer for you this morning. That no matter what it looks like, no matter what the circumstances are, that God will open your eyes and help you to see today that no matter what happens, God is with you. He has not deserted you. He has not turned his back on you. He has not turned his back on this church. I don't care what the devil does. I don't care what the devil says. Amen. There's more with us than there is with him. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. How many of you know God's waiting on us? Amen. He's waiting on us to reach out and touch Him, amen, and receive from Him those things that He's ready to supply us with. Psalms 121 and verse 4 says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. You see, my God don't go to bed when I go to bed. My God doesn't get tired. My God doesn't get sleepy. In the midnight hour, when the enemy would creep in and destroy the man of God or the people of God, my God is awake. Amen. And he has a snare set for the enemy. I don't have to worry. I don't have to concern myself. I don't have to get all upset over what's going on around me because I'll tell you today, I'm trusting in the Almighty. God that created this thing. I must tell you today that a true man or a woman of God and a true man or a woman of faith is not shaken by what they see or what they don't see. Amen? They get in the Word of God, they find out what thus saith the Word of God, and they stand upon the authority of the Word, because my Bible said that this Word would be standing when the world was on fire. Amen. The world's going to be on fire. Oh, yes. I told you earlier, there is an end to this thing. Yes. 
We get up every morning just like nothing's going to change. Today's going to be just like yesterday. And tomorrow's going to be just like today. But I'm here to tell you, folks, that while you're going through that thing and you're, you're thinking everything's going to be the same and nothing's going to change, change is taking place. Yes, Amen. 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 We need to be prepared and we need to understand that change is always in the works and change is inevitable. You see, we don't act like anything's ever going to change, but it is. See, I'm sensing that there are those in this congregation that are among us today who are looking around at the circumstances and some of you have developed a bad case of the sads. <laughs> Come on now. You look at the government and the shutdown and the flood and the things that are happening. And oh, you're just so down in the mouth. And your question is, oh, preacher, what's going to happen next? I'm here to tell you, folk, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how many of, of the devil's enemy is around you. God is greater than he is, and he has more around him. <coughs> See, a lot of people looking around themselves at the circumstances, and they've decided there's nothing. There's no money. And there's no hope and there's no way and there's no love and there's no chance and there's no change and there's nothing left and there's nothing we can do. You talk about getting a case of the sads, that'll give you one, amen? When you come to the conclusion there's nothing left to do, you're in deep trouble. <clears throat> but I want you to know this morning that those thoughts and those words come from an enemy out there surrounding you. He's out to destroy you. How many of you know the devil walks to and fro and up and down in the earth seeking whom he may devour? And although there is an end to most things, there are certain things that will never end. How many of you know that? God's love will never end. God's grace will never end. Amen. And God's authority and control will never end. The same God who spoke this thing into existence still has it in the palm of his hand. Amen. Nothing surprises him. Amen. Not even your circumstances. See, what the enemy wants you to believe is this. Okay, there's nothing left. You can quit praying now. You can quit confessing now. You can quit believing now. You can quit hoping now. You can quit expecting God to do anything now. You can quit dreaming now. You can quit looking. You can quit praising. You can quit marching. That's not the message this Bible contains. Amen. There's no quitting place for God's people. There's no stopping place in the service of the Lord. I came to tell you this morning, don't quit. Amen. God's still on your side. Amen. 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 See where the enemy is telling you there's no hope. There's no place to go from here. There's nothing left. I want to tell you this morning that just because the enemy says that doesn't mean God's not in control. I want to tell you this morning upon the authority of the word of God, even when the enemy comes to the point of pointing out to you that there's no hope and there's nothing left, there's coming an abundance of the Amen. blessing of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. God's able to move right in where there's nothing and create something out of it. How many of you know he created this earth out of nothing? That's right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, here's the good news this morning, children of God. We've got to get hold of this. We have to get hold of this. You may not see it, but God is with you this morning. If you're a child of God, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go all the way with you, even to the end of the earth. I can imagine that little old servant boy walking out of that tent early in the morning and he looked up and suddenly he realized that the Syrian army was all around them. And you'll notice the devil always sends a big crowd to destroy somebody that's moving in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. 
The devil got hold of this. He said, don't send a boy to do a man's job. So he sent his army down there and he surrounds the man of God and the tent. And the man of God is content to be in the tent sleeping. Amen. This is the same man of God that God has been telling all the plans of the Assyrians. But now he's in his tent sleeping. The little old servant boy jumps up early in the morning, runs outside, and there's a whole army of Syria surrounding them. Now in the natural, that says we in trouble. In the natural, that says we're going to be destroyed here. This, this man has sent his whole army down here. They're going to kill us. So he runs back in the tent and he says to Elisha, you've got to see this. Come out and see this. The whole army is out there. Elisha simply says, Lord, open his eyes. Open his eyes that he may see. God answered his prayer. Amen. The little servant boy took another look. Amen. He began to look around at the Assyrian army and all the mighty men, the soldiers and the horses and the chariots. And then he began <laughs> to see what God had. But what we need to do is get our eyes off what the enemy's got and get our eyes on what God has got. Amen? Amen. When he began to see what God had placed around, I said, God works the night shift. Amen? Amen. This old Syrian king sent all that army down there at midnight. Amen? When nobody would expect it and nobody would suspect it. But I'm telling you, God works the night shift. Amen. When he sent that army in, God said, okay, uh, Gabriel, you just take an army and go down there and take care of this little detail. Mm -hmm. When the young man got his eyes, his spiritual eyes open and got his eyes off of what Syria was doing and got them on what God was doing, he saw God had him outnumbered by just a little bit. Amen. There were chariots of fire and big old angels in those chariots right there, ready to take care of the situation. And I'm here to tell you today, I don't care what it looks like in your life. I don't care how desperate you are. I don't care how deep you are in. I pray God will open your eyes this morning and allow you to see where God is and how he's going to handle the situation. God's able to meet every need in your life. Of course it don't look like it's going to work. That's exactly what the enemy would like you to believe. But not only is he with you, he's for you this morning. Amen? You're his child. He loves you. He's not going to desert you in the middle of the stream. Not only is he with you and for you, but my Bible teaches me he's in you. Amen? How many of you know that God's in you this morning? And if you'll just yield to him and allow him to lead you and guide you in the circumstances, every, every circumstance of your life, there will be no mistakes because God does not make mistakes. Right. You see, where we run into trouble and get into trouble and make mistakes is that we're not listening to that still, small voice. We go out there and begin to do things and start things and try to finish things. And we're doing it our way and there's this voice saying, you better not do that. You better stop. You better go this way. And we're not listening to that voice. We're doing it our way. And suddenly we look up and the army of the enemy has got us surrounded. And we don't know where to turn. But God is with you. And God is for you. And God is in you this morning. How many of you know that God does his best work at night? <laughs> in the night seasons of your life, when it appears that everything is lost, that there is no hope, God does his best work. The scripture says, weeping may endure for a night. But joy come in the morning. Genesis chapter 26. A young man by the name of Isaac. You ought to read this. Very interesting scripture. Abraham's little boy. Mm -hmm. Was living in a land. And the Bible said in Genesis 26 beginning in verse 1. That there was a famine 
in the land. Besides the famine that happened when Abraham was there, this is even a more severe famine. So Isaac contrives a plan in his heart. I'll just move down to Egypt. And God says, Isaac, don't go anywhere. Stay right where you're at. How many of you know that when God's about to do something in your life, the enemy's going to try to get you to move? Yes. He'll do whatever it takes to try to convince you that you need to move on, that things are not going to work here. They, I mean, we're in a, a famine here. It's just not going to work. But my Bible said that Isaac stayed where he was and sold in a famine and received in that same year a hundredfold return. How many of you know when God's in control, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. My God is able to overcome every circumstance in your life. You just got to see that God's there. Amen? That's where Elisha's servant was. What it appeared like to him was they were going down. They were about to die. This was the day of their death. But God's servant, Elisha, just prayed, said, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The reality is God's in control. Now you look around you today at the flood and the shutdown of the government and all these things that man is trying to do. And it appears that we're in trouble and we got a bad case of the sads this morning. There are people in depression. How many of you know people get in depression and do some very stupid things? Because they don't know that God's in control. They don't know that God's army is greater than the enemy's army. <laughs> Here's the word I want to deliver to you this morning. I want to say this to someone who is looking for a better place, a better environment, a more favorable circumstance in their life in which to serve God. I say to you, upon the authority of the Word of God, hold on. God is coming to bless you right now. I pray this morning that God will open your eyes. In a place where the enemy of your soul has said there is nothing, there is no hope, that you're going down, that everything's going to fall, everything's going to be destroyed. At that place, God is able to deliver you and to bring blessing into your life, even as you look at the enemy surrounding you. I'm here to tell you this morning where you thought it was hopeless. God is able to deliver abundance into your life. See, I know I'm talking to someone this morning. and You've been in a long drought in your life. You've been in a season in your life where it just seemed like everything you've tried, everything that you have attempted has turned into bitter wine. Nothing has seemed to work for you. I know that the word drought means scarcity or lack or deficiency or emptiness or want. But I want you to know today, you need to hear this. There is a drought-busting anointing in God's presence. Amen? Amen? God can deliver you out of a drought. Elisha just prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes and let him see that they that are with us are more than they that are against us. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning upon the authority of the word of God that God is with you and there's nothing the devil or all the devils in hell can do to stop it if you will just trust God and allow God to move in your life and work in your life. I don't care what it looks like. There's more of God with you than there is the enemy against you. Amen. You need to get a hold of that this morning and understand that. You know what I've noticed? And it's a true pattern. It happens almost every time or probably every time. But I've noticed that since the flood around here, and that's the best reference I can use for you, as the counties and the cities and the state begin to repair the roads and, and begin to get everything sort of back in some kind of working order, that the panic begins to go down. Uh -huh. 
And people just go back to that daily routine. And there again I wonder if they ever think about God. I believe that there are people around you this morning, <coughs> probably within just shouting distance of this church, they go through every day of their life trying to figure out how to get ahead, trying to figure out how to survive, trying to figure out what to do next. And then floods come, and things happen, circumstances happen. But they've never thought about an end to this. They've never thought about God. They've never thought about that. So they are devastated by these events. Somebody said events of Mother Nature. Folk, there's no such thing as Mother Nature. I, I, I just throw that in for you. Amen. You need to understand that God's available to you even when things are devastating all around you, when the floods come, when the waves beat on you, when the winds are howling in the night season, God does his best work at night. Amen? Amen. God works the night shift. Amen. He's got your back. He's in control. But I've watched it. People, people have a tendency like a pendulum. They swing from one extreme to the other. And people just go about their business till some tragedy hits mm -hmm. and they go all the way the other way and they're in panic and they, and they totally do not know what to do. Elisha's little servant went outside. He saw that army mm -hmm. and fear took over right there yeah. because he didn't know what to do. And Elisha just prayed, said, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see that they that are with us are greater than they that are with the king of Syria. Amen. Oh, folk, listen to me this morning. We have no need to pass. If you have your faith and your trust in the God of this universe, the God who allowed his son to go to a cross 2,000 years ago and hang between heaven and earth and die there and shed his blood for you and for me, if you have your faith in that God, you have nothing to fear. Amen. Amen. You have nothing to fear. God is in control. It doesn't matter what this government does. There is going to be an end to this government. Oh my God. If you will study history, every world ruling government that's ever been has failed. There's no more Roman Empire. There's no more Nebuchadnezzar. It went away. Every nation, every Ruler of this world will one day fall, mm -hmm. but one will remain standing. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. When all else fails, God will still be in control. Amen. And that's the God I've got my faith in this morning. Amen. You say, well, preacher, you could get killed in a flood. You could get killed in a disaster. So what? <laughs> They sang a song a few minutes ago. Said these old fleshly bones hold my soul. One of these days they're going to burst wide open. I'm going to see a king. Amen. I don't know about you. I got my confidence in Jesus. He's able to sustain me. He's able to take care of me. I really don't know, care what the enemy does around here to fight this church and this ministry because there's more of God's power with us then there is the enemy's power to stop us. Amen. I want you to know one thing this morning. You look around you, and, and I, I, I have to say this. I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, but I have to say it. Situations are going to get worse. You have to understand that we will never, never, Never create a utopia where there is peace and man gets along and everything's going to work out just great. We will never create that. It is going to get worse. Evil men will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Nimrod and 
Adam's great-grandson began to try to create his own utopia by building a tower, and he was going to do it on his own, him and the people. And it didn't work. And it didn't work for Adolf Hitler, and it didn't work for Stalin, and it didn't work for anybody else, and it won't work for the Antichrist. This thing is about to end. There is an end Amen. to this age. You must understand that. Get hold of that. The end is coming, but be ready. Be trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be winning and witnessing to everybody that you have the opportunity to witness to. You must understand that in order to be prepared for an end that is definitely coming, you must be trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God works the night shift. God does his best work in the worst hours of your life.